Okay, warm welcome everyone to this webinar on uh, intellectual property protection and the safeguarding of Nordic indigenous traditional knowledge. My name is Lena Marcio and I work for the Finnish Heritage Agency and I've been the coordinator of the UNESCO Convention on Intangible Heritage for the past seven years. I'm really delighted to see so many friendly new and old faces here today in this webinar. We are really embarking on a very important topic. So uh, the cooperation on both on safeguarding intangible cultural heritage and also with the work on indigenous people on the Sami and on the Inuit has been going on for several years. Uh, I see here uh, uh, familiar faces, my, my colleagues who also work with this UNESCO 2003 convention in other Nordic countries. And I think this is a really important moment for us all to get together and to learn more about this topic with the really, really interesting presenters and panelists we have with us here today. Uh, we are here together to learn more about the safeguarding aspects related to the Sami heritage and especially from the point of view of intellectual property and also to strengthen the regional cooperation which is absolutely necessary in this issue. This webinar is organized together with the Finnish Heritage Agency, the Sami Parliament of Finland and the Sami Parliament of Norway. So warm thank you for the co-organizers. And we have been planning for this webinar actually from, from last June. So there has been a subgroup on intangible cultural heritage that has been, uh, that has come together as part of the conference that will take place now on Thursday. So this webinar is a side event for the International Conference on Protection of Nordic Indigenous Traditional Knowledge and Intellectual Property. And it will be organized in Inari, in Sayos Cultural Center, but also online. So it's un organized under the Finnish presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers and, or, and uh, by the ministries of education and culture, the economic affairs and employment, the Sami parliament in Finland, the Finnish Copyright Society and also the Patent and Registration Office. So we are really happy that now for this afternoon we can focus on the safeguarding aspects and also bring light to the views of the 2003 convention and what it brings to the IP protection. Before moving on, giving the floor to Celia Zombie, our host today, I would just like to remind you that you keep your uh, mics closed and maybe also the cameras when we start sharing the presentations. But when we have the, have the part on, on questions and discussion, you're very welcome to open your cameras. Uh, please put your comments and questions to the chat. So Pia Nuorgam will be, will be overseeing seeing the chat box and Celia, please, but what welcome on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Joo, kiistu Lena ja pari päivi puhkaita munan somban Mari Silja ja mun porkan Radveadin Nurkapelle Samedikis ja munna nootne lights tämän tän webinaara just tän immateriella kulturell bifatta vuodul. Hello, good morning everybody. My name is Celia Sombi and I work as an advisor at the cultural department at the Sami Parliament of Norway. And as Lena here mentioned, then we are also uh, co-organizing this uh, event together with the uh, Finnish Sami Parliament and then the Museo Virasto where Lena is working. So of course, thank you, Lena, for your uh, good uh, work with this, uh, with organizing this webinar. It's been mostly you who have been working with this. And as you also mentioned, then this is a side event in connection with the, uh, the bigger uh, event taking place in, in Anar uh, on Thursday, where we're going to tea look further on the protection of Nordic indigenous traditional knowledge and intellectual property. So I'm not going to talk so much more. Uh, I think we have now mentioned all the technical details and given our formal uh, introductions. So uh, we are actually going to jump uh, to the first uh, presentation of the day. 
uh, and that is actually myself uh, and my colleague, my excellent colleague, Siri Weinberg, uh, who are, we are going to uh, talk more about uh, the background for the work on the Sami intangible culture, cultural heritage. So I will then give the floor to you, Siri. You start. Thank you, Celia. I'll try to share with you <coughs> the presentation. Is it OK now? Uh, it's not in full screen yet, Siri. No, yeah, I understand. <coughs> there you are. Now it, it looks okay? good. Now yeah. it looks good. Yes, yeah, so you, you see here the, the, the program for the day. With some initial lectures and the panel debate. <coughs> well, uh, as uh, Celia uh, said, uh, my name is Siri Weinberg and I'm a senior advisor at the Department of Culture at the Sami Parliament in Norway. <coughs> and me and Celia, we will try to give a short update on, on the background. Uh, for the work on Sami intangible cultural heritage. <clears throat> I emphasize that this is from the perspective of the Sami parliament in Norway. As a little uh, introduction to some relevant issues, here are some illustrations. For instance, <clears throat> in recent years, a debate about Halloween costumes arises almost annually. Some keywords here might be <coughs> cultural misappropriation, representation, power of definition, and so on. Um, <coughs> maybe Celia, you would like to comment on some of the other pictures here. Yes, as you can see, there is also this uh, uh, the food retailer Kiwi. Uh, their uh, their uh, logo color is green, as you might see <laughs> on the color of the. Costumes. They have they duplicated Sami re regalia as a part of their team building process, and this was done without permission. Uh, and it's been used as a costume, as you might see. And here in the middle, we have the Swedish designer Gudrun Schöden, who has also inspired been inspired by Sami culture in some of her uh, collections. And on the far uh, right side, you can see uh, the Joika um, Kaker, which is uh, which is actually one of Norway's biggest food manufacturers, Nortura, that wanted to change its design. Joika Kaker invented in the 60s, and this sparked a huge public debate about the original design and the necessity of changing this design. But apparently many had a very strong emotional connection with this stereotypical character. <clears throat> and this uh, sparked a huge debate. At the same time, bullying experience were uh, uh, shared in connection with this character. And it became ultimately a high profile uh, debate. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I continue. Uh, there are at least uh, three separate processes that form a part of the background for, of the work. <clears throat> we will go in a little more into them. Uh, one of them is the, our cooperation with Art Council Norway. Uh, the Art Council Norway <clears throat> implements the uh, UNESCO 2003 Convention on the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage. And there has been a cooperation for several years. We also have the Pan-Sami cooperation initiated in uh, 2018 and the uh, ICH conference was arranged in Arnor in Finland. Uh, the Sami parliament in Finland had a key role there. there and there is also the so-called Disney process. It was established in uh, and published in 19, 2019, <coughs> the Disney film Frost 2. Uh, and a signing of a milestone uh, agreement was uh, <coughs> important there. <coughs> uh, one of the important outcomes from the cooperation with the Art Council Norway was a workshop on Sami intangible 
cultural heritage. Uh, the workshop was held in the Sami Parliament at the Sami Parliament in Karasjok uh, in Norway for three days in November 2019. Uh, it was arranged in cooperation between the Sami Parliament Art and Art Council in Norway. There were participants from all three Nordic countries. The three Sami Parliaments were represented. The Sami Civil Society was represented by both representatives from various uh, institutions as well as organizations. And the workshop uh, facilitators were Harry Deacon and Rick Smeet. The workshop aimed to assist the Sami community to discuss the challenges and opportunities of engage engaging with UNESCO and WIPO for the purpose of safeguarding Sami intangible cultural heritage within the community and or protecting traditional knowledge. And the discussions in the workshop, amongst other, aim to consider how Sami might benefit from doing so. And some processes <coughs> and possible structures that could uh, hinder safeguarding and transmission of Sami ICH was identified and discussed. <coughs> some of the workshop themes and issues addressed were uh, an approach to ICH from a Sami perspective, the getting to know the ICH convention, so that is the UNESCO Convention of Safe Safeguarding, as earlier mentioned. <coughs> the relationship between WIPO and the ICH convention, ownership and rights to, to a common cultural heritage. The relationship between tangible and intangible cultural heritage, la the language dimension, commercialization and uh, over commercialization, including public domain. <coughs> and uh, there were some case studies uh, in the workshop, for example, the sun sign symbol and the Disney process and others. Yeah, <coughs> some of the outcomes uh, from the workshop were a good result uh, with a pre working group focuses in focusing on the program and uh, a set of recommendations, uh, uh, among others. Development of a strategic plan around commercialization of Sami Duji and other forms of Sami ICH. <coughs> Development of a strategic plan promoting the practice, transmission and safeguarding of Sami ICH. And some other <coughs> outcome or follow up. Uh, for instance, was a dialogue with the UNESCO ICH Secretariat about an um, indigenous people's model or a forum similar to the World Heritage Convention, uh, also known as the 1972 Convention. <coughs> they have an indigenous people's forum on world heritage. And uh, well, we have been planning uh, a follow up webinar or seminar on Sami ICH and some of the issues ad addressed at the workshop. And this is this in cooperation with the Art Council Norway. <coughs> there was also a, a, a Sami parliament plenary case on the Norwegian side uh, with a focus on the ICH convention. Uh, that, this, that was in March 2020. And this was um, more like an introduction aimed to highlight the ICH as a field and mainly a description of a current situation. <clears throat> uh, here is a picture from the ICH conference in Anar, Urban Bevit, uh, the day of the birds. Maybe that's an English but translation. The birds. Yeah, the birds. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> uh, it was a bad week that week. <laughs> yeah. And it the reason arranged. why it's called why it's called bad week is because that's when the buds burst out in the, the greenery arrives. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> Thank you, Celia. <laughs> it was arranged uh, by the Sami Parliament in Finland in, in cooperation with the, uh, the other Sami Parliaments, as well as the Sami Council and the Sami Arts Council in, in 2018. Uh, we here see uh, Eva Kristina Harling giving a lecture on the Sami horn hat. Well, then I think I'll give the word to you, Celia. 
Yeah, and as you were mentioning, CD earlier on, uh, one of the processes that was uh, one of the th three processes that has been at the core of the Sami parliament no, uh, uh, in, on the Norwegian side, their work is uh, the, um, the DISTIS process, which was, of course, a very high profile case. And the culmination of that process from a Sami uh, intellectual property perspective was, of course, the signing of this milestone agreement between the three Sami Digis and the Sami Council. And uh, the, the statements that are very important, I want to read them to you because they are, uh, uh, they kind of form, they changed the, the, the approach to, to the the IC edge. And mind you, I will. Uh, we might use the term IC edge a lot, which is an abbreviation of intellectual cultural heritage. So please, please bear with us if if we if we use that term a lot. So I'm just making you aware of that. Well, anyways, uh, some of the important statements from that agreement was that the Sami collective and individual culture, including aesthetic elements, music language stories, histories, and other traditional cultural expressions are property that belong to the Sami. Remember the word property, it's the key, one, of, one key word here. And also another um, uh, statement from that agreement is uh, uh, to adequately respect the Sami, have to and in their culture, it is necessary to ensure sensitivity, allow for free, prior and informed consent and uh, ensure that adequate benefit sharing is employed. Uh, yes, you can change maybe the slide, CD. Um, this uh, this uh, agreement, it uh, uh, sparked an ownership approach to the Sami um, intangible cultural heritage and traditional knowledge. And it was also reflected in the Sami Parliamentary Council's actions plan, uh, uh, which objective is to design a common Sami approach for the management of Sami cultural heritage and traditional knowledge based on needs and methods for its protection. So it made the uh, decisions where it wanted to realize Sami self-determination and secure the cultural heritage and traditional knowledge future. Uh, the decision has also been to map Sami legal principles that will form the basis of the administration of this cultural heritage, traditional knowledge. Um, Another decision is to map the Sami Parliament's self-determination standpoint, as well as the common grounds. Map issues uh, with specific needs of a common political ground, for instance, research or other activities, as well as international legislative processes, with the aim to achieve a common political, political ground in these questions. Also, in... Uh, the SPR wants to agree on a common political ground to realize self-determination, design a common strategy and form an, admin an administrative body, as well as design man management principles. So the action to support these decisions, there were two. Uh, there have been there are two actions. One is to initiate a three-year project and also to organize the project with a political steering group as well as a working group with a mandate to include external ex expertise upon needs. So the Sami um, uh, parliament uh, on the Norwegian side, they decided to follow up uh, this um, action uh, and uh, initiated a pre-project for this three-year project because uh, we realized that we have to prepare a, a three-year project. So we started with the pre-project, which, which was called then the IMCAS, uh, and um, it was led by Pia Njorgam. Pia is going to talk some more about it soon, so I will not go into any more details here. Um, beyond uh, mentioning that uh, this IMCAS pre-project also produced a set of uh, recommendations, among others, uh, the establishment um, of a mechanism. Um, do you want to change slides? 
Um, yes, then by June 2021, uh, Siri here mentioned we had our first uh, plenary case, but we soon produced a second plenary case when it comes to intangible cultural heritage, and it was uh, uh, it was done in June 2021, um, and uh, the final outcome of the Sami uh, parliamentary uh, plenary session was Sami individual and collective cultures such as aesthetic elements, music, language, storytelling, tradition, history and other traditional cultural performances are property belonging to the Sami. So this is very much reflecting uh, the first um, uh, decision, the first uh, statement from the Walt Disney Agreement, as you can remember. Uh, the second statement was that the Sami Parliament continues the process of Sami intangible cultural heritage and will investigate models as well as designing measures which can meet the challenge and needs and promote rights regarding ownership of intangible cultural heritage. So the third decision was that the Sami Parliament process with Sami intangible cultural heritage seeks local, national, pan-Sami and international working methods to strengthen and build ownership of Sami intangible cultural heritage. There was also added a fourth uh, addition to this decision by the Norwegian Sami Parliament plenary session, which is that the intangible cultural heritage crosses the borders of four countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland and Russia, and should therefore be coordinated between these countries. The Sami Parliamentary Council must therefore be involved and strengthened so that indig indigenous peoples together sets the agenda for development in their areas and local communities. We must secure both tangible and intangible cultural heritage as well as the basis for our settlements and cultural practices. The tangible and intangible culture, cultural heritage are connected and must be seen in relation to one another. Protection of these should be strong and controlled by the Sami people. The strongest pr protection shall be the starting point in this process However, depending on if the Sami parliament gains real influence over these processes and the protection. The UNESCO World Heritage List can be or could be among the options for protection of the intangible cultural heritage. So those were the words of the plenary case and uh, it was also among uh, the recommendations of the IMCAS pre-project that we get statements like this from the from the uh, various parliaments. So what could be the Sami state of the play? Um, uh, in order to fulfill the aim of, of protection of Sami traditional knowledge and intangible cultural heritage, it is a continuous walk with a lot of sidewalks and branches, and there is a lack of capacity and resources to explore all these possibilities and approaches in order to reach the ultimate goal of permanent protection. Sami approach to these issues has become an holist a holistic one, meaning that rather than to separate inte intellectual property, traditional knowledge, and tangible cultural heritage, traditional cultural heritage expressions, cultural heritage, or whether to safeguard that rather than to protect, there are so many different variations and measures, the Samis has chosen to look it at as a whole at the time being. A holistic approach makes also more sense in an indigenous Sami context and as it de depicts the Sami situation and view of life. One example could be that if we were to fulfill the 2000 and con 2003 convention, for instance, to make a nom nominate nomination to the representative list, it would require three various Sami parliaments, as well as the Sami Council, as well as four different jurisdictions, whereby one country, namely Russia, has not even ratified the 2003 con convention, and they should all pull in one direction. And then we haven't even mentioned the local communities and the NGOs. So uh, to in so the it's quite uh, 
it's a lot of elements uh, coming into play in this. Uh, and uh, so, so far, the road pretty much creates itself as we walk. And sometimes we ha even have to trace it, sometimes even in, in, even in a little bit in the dark with a <laughs> torch and, and so on. But uh, we continue. So, uh, as you see, both the ASPER plan of action recommendations from the IMCAS project, as well as the plenary case from the Norwegian Sami parliament, point to an, to an establishment of a body. Uh, so, the new Sami parliament political platform, because we, res we just have a new uh, political uh, guides, uh, uh, political leadership elected into the Sami parliament of Norway, and they have just uh, released their uh, political platform called Bjaiva Alagu, in English, the dawn of day, uh, which is going to work until 2025. And there it expresses a political political intentions to establish an institutional home for traditional knowledge where intangible cultural her heritage is to be included. So indeed, uh, exciting times, but this is just the beginning. A lot of groundwork has to be done in a field with scarce resources in order to realize the Sami self-determination on these questions. Uh, and being the chair of the day, I could have continued, but I will choose to stop there. Uh, I think we, me and Siri, we have fulfilled our um, our uh, presentation now. So, uh, as a chair, I want to thank Siri so much for um, for giving us this presentation of the background for the work on the Sami. ICH, Intangible Cultural Heritage. Having said that, we will continue with the program. Um, and the next on the list is uh, Pia, Pia Njorgam, as, and Pia is going to talk about the IMCAS project, the study for the future of Sami uh, IP. And uh, Pia, I will let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Celia, uh, Aziri, and Lena. Can you all hear me? Apparently, yes. Loud and clear, Pia. Good. Um, hello to everyone. Varpeaivi uh, puhkaitte. My name is Pia Nuorkam, Uhtiovla Celia Pia. I'm a Sami lawyer from Utsjoki. Um, thank you to Finnish Heritage Agency. Um, and the Sami parliaments in Finland and Norway for inviting me. Um, and thank you to, to my project colleagues Siri and Celia for summarizing the work we have done and the Sami parliaments have done. Um, as Celia and Siri described, can you, Lena, please change the slide? Um, so as and it's not, yeah, sorry, it's not changing at my end. Just a moment. Okay. You well, can see you. Yeah. As Celia and Siri described, Inca's project was designed to explore the landscape on the matter in Sapmi. Our starting point was internal needs and values instead of external definitions on the subject matter. Uh, like um, Celia said, we used this kind of holistic approach. But if you want to use the traditional definitions in this area, uh, the project in the project we mostly look, looked at the Sami cultural elements, or as we called them, the cultural resources or intangible cultural properties. These elements are vital for a cultural identity. Uh, and they are building blocks of the livelihoods of the Sami. We found out um, there are legal principles <clears throat> and rules on the use and hence control internally. What we also found out um, is that these rules actually mean that there are levels of ownership to these different elements. Because these elements are so vital, we recognized that risks of appropriations 
appropriation are huge and we need to find solutions to strengthening management protection and beneficial use of these elements. Otherwise, the end result is that we will lose them gradually and at the same time, what makes us us. That poses a huge risk to our people. At the same time, another risk is that there is not enough support to keep these traditions living and breathing. I will come back to that soon. Um, to see what had been done already in this regard, we mapped what the Sami parliaments and other actors have done. We found out uh, that there is a lot that has been done, and this indicates a desire to find mechanisms of control and hence confirms the idea of ownership. We also found out that it to be that for it to be effective, we must have more coordination at a collective level. We lacked we lack developed mechanisms to have SAPMI wide coordination and which uses human rights and rights based approach. Most effective and efficient would be to have a central SAMI body to deal with these issues. Point of contact for the outside world and for the SAMI people. Ability to manage and develop for all SAMI people. Uh, uh, and also the ability to enforce SAMI rights against others if necessary. Why we say that one central body and human rights based and rights-based approach work is because we tested that. Uh, human rights-based meant that we took self-determination and untrip as basis, meaning uh, we have the right to define and decide what matters and what we work on. And as UNDRIP 31 article says, indigenous people have the right to maintain, maintain, control, protect and develop their cultural heritage, traditional knowledge and traditional cultural expressions. It also says that indigenous peoples have the right to maintain, control, protect and develop th their intellectual property over such cultural heritage, TK and traditional cultural expressions. And when using this right um, and when doing this work in the project, we did what we have been told so many times to do by the by Vipo IGC and the work there, which is that we used the IP protection for our benefit. The Sami can use and they have the same right as anyone else to protect protect their property. Um, and one of the things we assisted on on this project was the product uh, uh, Celia and Siri showed on the slide. So this is the end result. The character is lost and the company changed the name. Um, can you, Lena, please change the slide? So today we're discussing the interaction between IP and UNESCO Convention for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage. And the question is how this UNESCO agreement could support the protection of Sami, uh, Sami intangible cultural heritage. It has been criticized by indigenous peoples for not acknowledging the ownership and for not allowing full self-determination. And the criticism is still valid, but if you look at the agreement, I'm sure all of us here today see the value uh, of the agreement itself and it acknowledging the value of SAMI uh, ICH. That acknowledgement needs then to be implemented to effective measures on national level to keep the SAMI ICH living and breathing. Um, I will come back to that soon, uh, but before that, let us uh, go back to the protection aspects and the right steps uh, uh, towards respecting indigenous people's right to self-determination and to actually listen and respect our interests. The directives and operational guidelines on implementation of this UNESCO agreement states 
uh, say, says that states are st strongly obliged to take into account and put special emphasis on indigenous part participation when implement implementing the convention. Also on the convention text publication, there um, is a special um, document attached uh, to it and it has been accepted in 2015. It is called the Ethical Principles for Safeguarding ICH and they um, and it was uh, adopted by the Intergovernmental Committee for the Safeguarding of the, of the ICH. And these principles are definitely step the right direction when knowing the criticism by indigenous peoples. They talk about how communities should have the primary role in safeguarding their own ICG. Also, uh, how all activities with ICH should be characterized by transparent collaboration, dialogue, negotiation and consultation and contingent upon their free, prior, sustained and informed consent by communities concerned. They talk about how customary practices governing access to ICH should be fully respected, even where they might limit broader public access. They talk about value assessment uh, and how this, uh, this be made by groups and cells and should not be subject to external judgments of value. And maybe most, most importantly for the topic of today, the communities, uh, groups and individuals who create intangible cultural heritage should benefit from the protection of moral and material interests resulting from such heritage and particularly from its use a research documentation promotion or adaption by members of communities and others. Uh, can you, Elena, please change the slide? And the list goes on. Even though the document is called Ethical Guidelines, I still consider it as a step to right direction and UNESCO acknowledging the Indigenous concerns and taking into account the human rights developments on Indigenous rights. Even though there are real gaps on protection, this convention nevertheless recognizes the value of SAMI ICH and places the states an obligation to keep the SAMI ICH living and breathing. The question then is how the implementation of it on national level uh, uh, in Nordic countries can help to support SAMI ICH living and breathing, and on the other hand, make these ethical considerations reality and, for example, ensure the strong protection of the Sami intangible properties. I would urge and welcome an analytical approach. That is why I was really happy to open the Finnish Heritage Agency's web questionnaire for the Sami in Finland that is now open. As far as I understood, this questionnaire was made for the purpose uh, of the fin Finland reporting the implementation of the convention to UNESCO. The questionnaire is very, very analytical, covering ICH connection with nature, education, awareness raising and communication, political and legal, administrative, ad administrative measures taken by the country to keep SAMI ICH, ICH living, funded and governed. And in fact, I tried to answer some of the questions. I specifically concentrated uh, on one of where the Heritage Agency asks on funding and policies for SAMI ICH in Finland and whether we think that is proportionate when compared to the funding Finland allocates to Finnish ICH. Can you, Lena, please change the um, slide? I started investigating the Finnish state budget for the year 22 and mapped the funding allocated for Sami purposes. Unlike in Norway, as far as I know, there is no separate document for allocations for Sami purposes in Finland. Um, before we go to what I found on the Finnish state budget, let's look at the let's look at Norway's budget for next year. Norway's total budget is uh, 1,578 uh, billion kroners in euros. That is about 160 uh, billion euros. The allegations for SAMI purposes are, are about um, uh, 129 million euros. Half of it is for the SAMI parliament, for the administration and activities 
which the Sami parliament can mostly decide on its own based on the right to self-governance and right to self-determination. Uh, Sami parliament funds a lot of activities, example, for example, business, businesses, language centers, uh, organizations and other organizations. Uh, um, um, so there's a lot of activities that the Sami parliament in Norway funds. And there are also other actors which are probably not in this budget e e even. Well, let's look at Finland. Finland's total budget for year 22 is uh, 64.8 billion euros. And when studying uh, the Sami allocations for um, the Sami allocations, or rather allocations for Sami purposes, uh, for hours, I'm sorry, I don't have a firm number, uh, but this is what I found. Um, Sami parliament gets um, around five to six million euros for the administrative uh, for the administrative costs and the and the political activities and 200,000 uh, for music um, center and other centers like the kids center and film center and 200,000 for the Sami art organizations festivals etc on the Finnish side we don't have a political parties we only have few NGOs uh, with um, um, enough funding to have staff and these are funded directly by the ministries um, and there are other actors too but like i said i must say it took me some hours to try to answer this question and when looking at the structure and the amount of sami actors in finland I came to a conclusion that there are really few that get paid for keeping the Sami ICH living and breathing, and not to mention to answer this questionnaire in an informed and an analytical way. There is a real, there is already a real chance that some of the Sami ICH is under serious threat of being lost. Um, we can probably all agree with UNESCO and Finnish Heritage um, Agency that we need development in all of these areas that are mentioned in this very good questionnaire. I think we all would love to answer and each, um, each and every one of these questions, but we consistently lack funding and resources to address these sensitive areas and to do it in a way uh, that Sami can and need to do it uh, through self-determination and process controlled by us. Uh, it is good that the Heritage Agency is also uh, uh, arranging a workshop on this matter. So whether it be safeguarding of, uh, of our ICH or finding out what needs to be protected, most issues come down to the fact that we don't have enough resources to go through the process and, and develop mechanisms and structures necessary to deal with these issues. Um, so in order to find answers, the right to participate in meaningful way needs to be fulfilled by the governments. They need to ensure that we have sufficient funding. Uh, and this uh, one thing I need to still say is this, that this obligation is not only generally seen, but it's also clearly articulated in specific legislation. Um, and it's um, and it's uh, the national implementation in of the CPD convention Nagoya protocol um, and also there is a new transparency act on the Norwegian side uh, relating to the enterprises transparency and work on fundamental and human rights and decent working conditions so in short we need to first combat the structural power balance to even discuss this matter and let alone make informed decisions we need to build strong institutions to safeguard and protect the sami ICH, ich and we need to de uh, evaluate and look carefully at the ones we have with critical eyes are they doing their job uh, the job they have the best way they can to fulfill these goals and if not analyze how could they do better there is a lot of work to be done, but I think it's this is a great start. And I want to thank once more the Finnish Heritage Agency for their support and the Sami parliaments in Finland and Norway for prioritizing, prioritizing this work. Thank you. Thank you, thank Pia. You.
uh, a little bit over time, but uh, I think we can uh, we can afford that. <laughs> we still have some allocated some time for some questions and discussions afterwards. But before we are getting there, we are going. Uh, we have to. Uh, we are uh, remind. We will remind ourselves that this is a Nordic indigenous um, event, and uh, then we will. Uh, go over to Greenland when we where we have Christina Muller who's going to give us an insight in uh, their work when it comes to intangible cultural heritage. So please, Christina, uh, we would also very much appreciate it if you told us a little bit about yourselves. Here we are. I had troubles. Um putting myself off mute. So my name is Christina Müller and I'm working for the Greenland National Museum and Archives. We're working with the 2003 convention and how and with safeguarding intangible cultural heritage. And I'm trying to share my PowerPoint. So in relating to today, instead of talking about how we are safeguarding, I would like to talk to you about some of the questions that we have about how intellectual property rights can help protect our um, intangible cultural heritage from being misappropriated. And I've taken um, some case studies that happened, well, so fairly few years ago now, um, but before I start, I would like to hear, can everyone see the presentation? Uh, it, it's looking good, uh, Christina. Great. So I have some. I have two cases from Galashlit um, and on the agenda for my talk today, and I'll be short so that we have time for questions afterwards. Is that um, our Galashlit suit, our national dress, um, has been the center of some discussions and appropriation or appreciation over the years. Now, before I start talking about the case, these cases, I would like to introduce you to these West Greenlandic uh, Galashli suit. Now, our national dress was born out of our traditional clothing. And in the 1800s, now these are all from the summer period, we see that they are starting to add beading around um, the sleeves around the um, the snippets, sometimes even around the neck. So this is from the 1850s. This is from the 1840s, and this one is from the 1870s. So these are sort of the earlier types of our national dress of how we are showing both our status, but also when we're dressing up for celebrations. And then already from the 1890s, the form that we use today is born. So more than 130 years ago. And we use them for the big celebrations in life. So it's for funerals, baptisms, weddings, first school day, uh, graduation, both high school and university, um, weddings, I forgot if I said that already. So this is a very important piece of garment. Now, in 2009, which was a huge year for Greenland, um, the Self-Government Act uh, came into effect. Greenland um, ratified the 2003 convention, but also the year started with the Danish designer um, launching his Jude collection, which was completely based on the Greenlandic Galashli suit. And it sparked huge controversy, not because of the clothing, but because of the boots. And as you can see here, on the image on the right side, it is a exact plastic replica with heels of our camisette. And it was a huge controversy. First of all, the collection was called Jude after his aunt. 
and not anything Greenlandic. The discussions were a heated debate, actually, about intellectual rights, intangible cultural heritage, and who is allowed to do what with our elements. And especially about the Kamek boots, were they an imitation or were they based on inspiration? Imitation would be an act of exoticism, a beautiful displaced footwear you would be able to see in, for instance, London, completely taken out of context. And it would be an insult to the tradition and the makers of Camisat, all of this knowledge that goes into making Camisat as it is. Inspiration instead could be an act of cultural appreciation, highlighting the patterns of a long value tradition. Now, Peter Jensen received death threats because of his appropriation of our culture. And of course, as I said in the beginning, 2009 was a very important year for Greenland. Um, and when it came to sort of these images of our identity, then all of this outrageous um, reaction based on how he just took a design completely and turned it into a plastic high-heeled boot makes sense. So obviously, I would say this was actually an act of cultural appropriation. Now, in 1996, the Danish designer Jørgen Simonsen built um, made a collection for Versace called the Ice Crystal Princess. And some of the clothing never became a reality, but so the, the drawings remained. So you can see the Nuliang Miut that he's been playing around with. But other than that, he's not really touched it. In 2016, he was invited to Greenland to do an Ice Crystal Princess Volume 2. Now, he was invited and it was on the basis on what happens when a designer is inspired by a culture. So not imitating, but inspiration. And what he did was that he came, he talked to all the cultural bearers. He had um, Galashlit beaters making the Nuliang Miut. The sealskin were provided by Galashit sealers. The seamstresses at Gittat and Galashit Suliang Nilmik, Elin Narfik, helped with how to work with the sealskin and how to make the cuts so it looked beautiful. So it became a collaborative effort between designer and cultural bearers. And as you can see on the images, it looks nothing like our Galashit suit. So it's still an inspiration. It is not an appropriation. So where am I going with this? Well, we've been looking. Oh, I don't know what happened here. We've been looking at how intellectual property rights can help us, but there's a bit of a challenge. Indigenous traditional knowledge is described as knowledge, know-how, skills and practices that are developed, sustained and passed on from generation to generation within a community, often forming part of its cultural or spiritual identity. But then cultural expression is described as forms part of the identity and heritage of an indigenous community, is passed down between generations and includes the artistic expression of culture through music, dance, art, design, names, signs, symbols, performances, ceremonies, architectural forms, handicrafts, narratives, and other expressions. Which means that indigenous traditional knowledge and cultural expressions as under intellectual cultural uh, property rights are for many indigenous worldviews and cultures inseparable. So what I would like us to talk about now is how can intellectual property rights support knowledge systems and expressions that have collective ownership that has been practiced since time immemorial and how would it actually function in reality so i'm not talking about safeguarding because our bearers are amazing at that i'm talking about protection from appropriation thank you 
thank you, Orogito, Kirstina. Um, that was a very interesting uh, 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 standpoint and lecture from Greenland. Uh, it was nice to hear how you how you have uh, solved and what kind of uh, uh, issues you face in in this regard. Uh, we have now we have now arrived to the point in the program where we have some questions and discussions. So uh, we are having Pia is helping us today to to moderate the chat. So. Uh, Please, if uh, anybody wants to ask questions, you can either uh, um, put in a question in the chat or raise your hand. I can see that Ella Karin has already yes, asked yes. for the floor, so I will give the. You can please please ask your question, Ella Karin. Yes, uh, thank you for interesting lectures. Uh, I'm working. Um, uh, at the National Association of the Sami People in Sweden. I'm a Sami myself, and uh, I'm working with a fishing project, a Sami fishing project. We want to document the Sami fishing traditions. And I wonder how can Sami food be protected? Is, is there any discussion about that? Traditional Sami food. Uh, I also work in, I'm in the board of Slow Food Sapni. Uh, have been any discussions about uh, that? Thank you. Yes, Ella Karin wants to know about the food protection uh, from the Sami side. I would very much like to ask, is there anybody who feels compelled or who wants to answer that? Maybe Siri, maybe you can say a few words about that if there's not anyone else. <clears throat> well, um, about protection, um, uh, tradi uh, traditional Sami foods, uh, I would say, is, is also and, and, and uh, know how or how to, to, to produce and how to, to collect uh, the ingredients and so on is, is a part of intangible cultural heritage indeed so um, but <clears throat> so under the co convention of um, uh, safeguarding intangible cultural heritage it's it's it fits in there uh, in my view that's the safeguarding part um, my expertise is not on on uh, uh, IP rights and protection. So maybe somebody else who is more into that could okay. answer. Yeah. Thank you, Siri. Jacob, did you want to answer, or do you have a, a question? No, I can. I can give some guidance on on that question, Ella Cotton. Uh, food, much like in other areas of the, you know, in, intangible kind of intangible cultural properties, but also are expressed in physicality like that, they can be difficult to find one particular solution that solves that particular problem. But this goes to kind of what uh, Celia was talking about before in a holistic approach, that we do have access even now in the Western type of intellectual property protection structures to protect something like food. Uh, it could go to looking at uh, the way it's educated, the way you educate people to create it, that kind of thing, and how to identify someone who's who's passing on genuine Sami knowledge, traditional Sami knowledge. There's a way to protect that. You could actually look at other systems that have been used in other areas of the world when it comes to ingredients, when it also comes to final product food, to show the relevant public show people outside of the community what is genuine and what is not genuine when it comes to ingredients or food or even sourcing. Uh, and this is not a, a problem that's unique to indigenous peoples. I think one of uh, the best examples to kind of look at to see how important even genuineness in, in cuisine is to a larger society is a system in Japan to ensure the uh, accuracy and genuineness of sushi. 
because it became such a popular food that it also became very distorted from its traditional roots. And as a country, Japan saw that and wanted to ensure that there was a way sushi in its traditional form was communicated to the public. So they've established a system that is able to communicate that in in the product itself, that this is a genuine uh, piece of sushi, but also in those who make it, where they certify the creator of genuine sushi. So we can take some guidance from those, but there are also other uh, elements that we can add in a protection system in the indigenous context that directly speaks to traditional food. Um, it is possible, but at the same time, this also comes back to another issue that we've talked about previously, and I'm sure we'll hear about later, and that is the lack of resources and funding to allow these things to be built within the community uh, instead of external systems kind of selecting to help uh, the Sami communities. And I think that's something we need to kind of look at generally in this holistic approach is how do we develop that foundation where we can build these mechanisms and have, have, <clears throat> have them grow from the community and address community needs in the way that the community needs them. Okay, thank you, Jacob. I see uh, a number of raised hands. I don't know if anybody wanted to continue on this. Uh, if not, then we will just continue with the list. I don't, I think it was Benedetta next. Yes, thank you very much. Um... I am Benedetto Bertazzi, I am UNESCO facilitator for the Intangible Cultural Heritage Convention and I'm based in Italy. Uh, so first of all, I would like to congratulate all of you. It's such an amazing work that you are doing out there and it's so important and really it's, um, it's very interesting the way you are protecting those communities. Uh, I am a jurist uh, and I work in intellectual property rights uh, since a while, um, associating uh, what I do to communities' needs. Uh, I wanted to say that regarding food, for instance, uh, in, uh, um, in Italy and in other five countries of the Alpine region, we have a project. Hadia Deacon is, uh, I mean, she knows about that because she's involved. Uh, and uh, uh, it is called Alp Foodways, uh, and this project aims uh, at protecting traditional food and foodways in the mountain region for alpine communities. And there are quite a number of intellectual property rights that have been used already to better protect in a similar holistic approach than the one you are using. So if you're interested, ask Harriet because she knows a lot uh, or even you may uh, find information in internet at foodwaste.eu. Um, basically they use uh, geographical indications a lot and collective trademarks uh, to protect uh, traditional receipts. Um, I had a question regarding uh, the uh, presentation that was just uh, rendered. Uh, in particular, I wanted to know if uh, in the cases of imitation, so not uh, uh, just um, inspiration, but imitation, uh, the Sami uh, communities have tried to connect uh, the the designer. So did you try to write him, uh, to get in touch with him, uh, and what happened? Did he listen to the to the voices raised or not? I would like some information about that. Thank you. Thank you, Benedetta. If I understood you right, your question is for uh, the, the Greenland and Kirstina. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. Then Kirstina, you answer. Thank you, Benedetta, for your question. Um, yes, there was communication between the Greenlandic people and the designer. Um, and you can even find them because they were published in Vogue of all places. Um, so there is, um, you can see 
a change in his rhetoric about how he was inspired. In the beginning, he says it's because of his aunt, Jude, who lived in Greenland in the 1960s. And then later on, he changes it to see to say that it is based on a respect for the Greenlandic uh, people that he made it. So it's a really interesting story when you fold it out um, to see like how people reacted and how people engaged. And also why I took the, the case with Jan Simonsen um, almost 10 years later in the change of how people are reacting. And of course, there's still discussions today about what you can and cannot do with the Galashi suit. Um, but the dialogue between people and designers is definitely there. Okay, thank you, Benedetta and the Christine. Uh, then we have Jelena Porsang next on the lists. Jelena, I give the floor to you. Thank you, Olukito. Jelena Porsang er sami varaka tabri museo jodi hanki. I'm the museum manager for the biggest Sami museum on the Norwegian side uh, in Karashak. And uh, I would like to uh, present some thoughts and uh, follow up with Benedetta's question about communication. Uh, so I have been working quite for a while with repatriation of Sami drums and uh, many people who are present here probably have already heard and read from the Norwegian newspapers and from the Guardian about the case which is related to my museum and the drum we have uh, demanded the ownership on from the Danish uh, National Museum in Copenhagen. And we are working now with a bigger exhibition on repatriation of Sami drums in April, which will be opened in April. But when it's said, I would like to take one case, uh, a recent example presented a couple of uh, weeks ago by the Nordic Sami TV news, and probably people have uh, seen that about a computer game which utilizes Sami cultural heritage and the our uh, uh, secret uh, sacred Sami drums as well. I can share uh, share a screen with you uh, just to show. Uh, if you can see it, the uh, website of this video game, uh, Scap My Snowfall. And my reflections on that is that it is not an inspiration here. It is the use of a uh, direct use of our uh, key elements of our material and spiritual culture. And um, it will result in commercial exploitation of uh, of it and this is a beautiful game and it presents probably in a very uh, good way the sami culture and our values about our relationship with the nature i have not been uh, i have not used so much time to go in depth with that and i uh, don't know where who are, are the owners of this um, uh, enterprise which is making it but anyway I have been thinking that uh, uh, that uh, it is a case which will uh, attract attention of the world to our Sami culture in the same way as Disney did with uh, their um, Frozen uh, movie, but uh, this game will be much more probably used and available for uh, all around the world. And I just think uh, uh, I'd have a question which probably some parliament cannot answer right now uh, as it stands, but does some parliament think this issue shall be followed up in the same way as some parliament did it with Disney? Because I think that this is uh, if this game would uh, uh, disseminate the right knowledge uh, about our uh, traditional knowledge um, on our secret, sacred Sami drums and our spirituality and our history, and uh, if uh, this, the benefit sharing will be taken with this um, persons or enterprise which uh, is making it, Probably it is something to discuss or to think about. And I think that uh, when we are talking about benefit sharing and now some museums, my museum in, uh, in, uh, included, are uh, struggling with repatriation of our sacred drums, maybe it is something to consider when the drum is so central in this uh, video game. 
So if Sami Parliament could just make a comment on that. Uh, thank you, Yelena. Uh, I had, um, uh, I, <laughs> we're not, we, it's me and Siri basically here representing the Sami Parliament of, of Norway and uh, we have also some uh, another colleagues, but I can start uh, perhaps answering that. Uh, I have not heard of this video game and uh, this is uh, Issues like this were the ones that we were, were touched upon in the uh, IMCAS project that uh, was led by, uh, by Pia Njorgam. And uh, obviously this case would be uh, an, uh, a very obvious one for, the, uh, for, the, for this uh, pre-project and also the continuous project. Um, uh, as uh, we have not heard of this and seen this, uh, obviously, we have to look for more into it, uh, but uh, it's a very obvious candidate for this, um, for our, uh, for this, uh, this uh, our project uh, that is should also be led at an SPR level, at the Sami Parliamentary Council uh, level. I, I don't know if anyone else feels to add something here uh, uh, I, I, um, I it's very good that you po point this out Jelena thank you so much uh, and unfortunately this is a, a very big question and I feel like it's a bigger question than what we can touch upon in in this forum but it's very good that you highlight this we, we need to continue on this we have some more people on the list uh, I want to give the floor now to Yalmar to to continue uh, with with his question. Celia, uh, yes, maybe I can just give a couple right, of uh, facts. Wait, about just this. a second, Yalmar, because I think Pirita wants to answer on the behalf of the Finnish Sami Parliament. Just a second, Yalmar. Okay. Yeah, sorry, uh, I was just trying to uh, take a couple of minutes to uh, discuss this game example. This has been featured on Ulesatmi. I found at least two uh, news articles about this game. And uh, based on this information, um, there is at least one company involved which has Sami ownership uh, in making this game. And they are especially there. Uh, to help with the representation and making sure that some information is presented correctly. Another company that is involved um, has people working there uh, or has, has people involved with the company who have connection to the north. Um, so, so far at least uh, what I've seen in the Sami media, the reaction to this game has been neutral. Uh, but uh, but um, uh, I think this is a case that we need to monitor and discuss um, but so far, I'd say that the reactions have been neutral, if not slightly positive, on the Finnish side of SATMI. Thank you, Pirita. Then I give the floor to Yalmar. Okay, uh, just in, in brief. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you to the presenters, uh, 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 Silvia Pia and uh, Christina. I think it's very interesting. Also, being being one of those who have been followed the, the development of of the national dress, especially the, the women's dress issues. Uh, uh, it's correct that these being very controversial discussions in in our uh, the, the area because uh, the the traditionalism was disturbed in a way. Uh, 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 but uh, I think that, that uh, it took a uh, 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 long time when discussions were was going on and, and I think now the women are, 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 are you know, are, are using us kind of arts with the, you know, uh, to certain uh, uh, family events or, 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 for instance, choirs in Greenland are using, you know, not, not exactly the national dress, but designed in a way there are, uh, uh, which are, are more, more accepted, I think. Uh, uh, but in the beginning, it was controversial. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> 
Also, Tobias, uh, I think it's very important to, to also talk about, uh, about the rights uh, uh, to maintain control and protect the uh, 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 and develop the cultural uh, the heritage and traditional knowledge uh, and cultural ex expressions, etc. But I think it's important to, that the rights are in existence in regards to, to the uh, uh, for the indigenous uh, uh, peoples around the Arctic, uh, and also that that. Uh, 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 to the state, the states we are belong to, uh, you know, for us uh, agreements of government uh, 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 should take measures uh, uh, to recognize and protect the exercise of, 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 of the rights I just mentioned. I don't know uh, how the indigenous people's rights are, 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 are important to, to, to use as uh, 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 to protect the, the cultural heritage uh, uh, as it is. Uh, uh, my question is just that whether you have any communications uh, with the authorities uh, in, in, in the, the uh, Arctic uh, 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 Areas uh, Nordic and Greenland, etc., to uh, just to, to whether they have any policy to to, to protect the uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, violation of of of, of certain uh, kind of cultural uh, uh, issues. Are there any mechanism to 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 solve those kinds? Do we have any mechanism to 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 solve those problems? Uh, 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 which I think it's important to have. Thank you. Thank you, Yalmar. Pia, did you want to answer? Sure. Thank you, Yalmar, and everyone else on the on these comments and questions. Uh, what we found out in the project was that um, we need a mechanism ourselves to find the answers on what is it that we value, what is it that we want to protect, what is it that we want to share, and on what terms. And after that, we can discuss with the governments on, on what are the lacks on on uh, on protection on the IP laws or other laws that what are the protections that we need uh, through laws but I don't think we are there yet we need to first discuss this internally and I think we need the governments to support this discussion and um, and I see this as a vital question for for every indigenous people as vital as the land right, because this is the resources, the cultural resources we still manage and we truly own that is ours. And we need to use that as, as our benefit, not only for the survival of our people for cultural identity, but also because of the economics, economic aspects and the livelihoods that usually are uh, led by women when it comes to the ICH issues. And I want to also comment the, the game example. Um, I'm happy to hear that there is some Sami participation there, um, but we must remember that that, not, that doesn't resolve uh, the issues surrounding the Sami people owning their co collective property. Uh, and this is, of course, why we have worked toward a central body to be that point of contact to external actors to ensure AFIC for our people. 
Okay, thank you, Pia, and thank you all. I think we have to stop there, although we are having very interesting and very important uh, discussions. Uh, we cannot, uh, con we, we have to continue them afterwards. Now we're going on a break. We're already over time. Sorry about that, Lena, but I thought, uh, in my opinion, the discussions were so important, we had to continue them. So uh, we will then break for a short coffee break. Uh, when should we resume? 30 or 35? Lena, you who are the overall boss, what do you think? 33. 33. 33? Okay, 10 minutes, then we will... 10 minutes coffee break. Yes, 10 minutes coffee break, so thank you everybody. So we will see each other back again here in 10 minutes. Thank you. It's mine as well, and I'm very happy to leave the floor to Jake. Oh, well, thank you. And uh, thank you for having me to, to kind of lead this panel. And I welcome everyone that's that's watching online. I think it's been a great discussion so far. We have had some really interesting input and some really good ideas to think about. And we have wonderful people today to talk on this panel about these specific elements and the challenges faced in the area of ICH um, in the indigenous context. Uh, we have um, Yalmar Dahl from the Inuit Circumpolar Council, uh, Christina Heta from the Sami Council, Yelena Pochonger, from the Redondoatar Museum. I hope, I, I always have trouble with that one. <laughs> and then Perita Nakodiave from the Sami Parliament of Finland. Uh, so thank you for, for being here and taking your time out. Um, and I thought we would just uh, kind of jump in. If I did poorly with the introduction, feel free to, to add more of an introduction if you feel like it. Um, but I was kind of wondering, we've spoken a lot about the uh, not really defining ICH, but we've seen a lot of examples of indigenous properties or indigenous elements, traditional elements in use. Uh, and we've heard some about an approach to protection and that kind of stuff and a holistic approach. But I was kind of curious if you could tell the people listening, you know, today in the conference about your experience with this and perhaps maybe some example that comes to your mind of maybe an, an uh, use of an indigenous element of a Sami element or an Inuit element uh, that was positive, maybe one that was negative. Um, Yarmar, why don't we start with you with that question? Oh yeah, uh, I think also it's, the discussions have been very fruitful. I miss a little bit the Sweden side of the Sami Parliament and the same council, but, uh, but I think we we got we got the holistic approach on on, on uh, the issue on uh, property rights. And of course, it's uh, for us. You see, we are also divided in four borders and the, 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 had the. Uh, same cultural historic backgrounds but uh, 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 different political systems and uh, the importance of protection of cultural heritage is it's very core uh, uh, i think it's very important that we we, 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 we talk about that uh, also that uh, somebody mentioned the, the food systems and the food security for, for all of us in beaches in the Arctic are, 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 are very, very important. Uh, 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 also in Greenland, we are talking about uh, self-sufficiency in regards to, to, to food, uh, the traditional food, etc. And in South Greenland, we are, are, are developing within the semi farmers areas, uh, the uh, agricultural uh, 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 food uh, 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 developments, etc., etc. Et but uh, in short terms, I think uh, 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 in regards to, to, to uh, uh, property rights, it's, if uh, 
there is respect for, for, for the rights of, of ownership of uh, traditional lords and uh, indigenous lords and, and uh, the protection and uh, ownership of cultural heritage. I think it's at the same time very important to 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 to, to also talk about how how do we do in regards to protection issues. I should say I've been, been attending in many years the, the World Intellectual Property Organizations in the in regard in regards to to the issues we are, uh, are talking about as well. But uh, that it's an, an, a huge organization. It's very, very difficult to get through in regards to, to, to in writing and in, in agreement to, 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 to get any protection on on, on the, uh, 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 almost everything I I have to say, you know, it's well and, it, and on that to, to point, get through on, on, on international level. And on that point, Yelma, I was curious, um Berita, we heard Yelma mention the uh the spanning over different countries and the difficulty of, of I think, finding protection there. Uh, what's the experience from the Finnish Sami parliament side in those regards? Do, do we see those same complications in the Sami kind of governmental context? Yes, uh, that is correct, Jacob. Um, I can give a couple of examples that we see here on the Finnish side of SAPMI within the Sami parliament context, because we, of course, get a lot of contacts from people asking about um, the use of um, Sami culture and its elements, but also people um, telling us that they have come across something that they think is wrong. And um, of course, the challenge of talking about these things is that it is not us Sami on the Finnish side who can decide over these issues or should only be dealing with these, but we need to work together across the borders as one people. But then what is also important is to understand the specific situation in each of the countries. So, for example, us here on the Finnish side, we are specialists in understanding how the Sami culture is exploited here uh, by the Finnish tourism industry, for example. And when we are working on these issues together, uh, with the Sami in different countries, I think it's important to respect our understanding of our context and our specific situation uh, regarding the Sami rights here on this side. And that, a couple of examples. Can I just yes. brief example that I can give? Uh, we recently uh, were dealing uh, with a case that was also featured in media, uh, uh, a German company. Uh, organizing a virtual run event with a Sami theme. Um, and uh, it seems like some companies have realized that uh, it is uh, indeed a requirement to work with the Sami. And in this case, uh, they claimed that they are working with the Sami. It turned out that there was one Sami, um, or, or at least they told, they, it was a Sami person who was working with, with them as kind of a run ambassador. Uh, but we tried to explain to the company when we contacted them that you need to speak to the official representatives of the Sami people within the different countries. Um, and of course, Sami people need to be free to work with their own culture and, for example, make business ventures and come up with new businesses. Uh, but anyway, it's important that we have this dialogue together. So maybe I'll pause there and, and then I have plenty of other examples that we can disc later, discuss later on. Mm. And I think you brought up some great points that actually I'd like to have Christina expand upon um, working with, you know, within the Sami Council that spreads over and covers the uh, multiple jurisdictions as one entity. Uh, perhaps, Christina, you can talk a little bit about those kind of collective uh, coordination problems. Maybe that's a good way to describe them or, or dealing with certain situations at that coordinated level. If I can, I hope you all can uh, hear me well. I, I I guess I have a bit of a bad line, but uh, uh, but yes, uh, the Sami Council also 
get a lot of uh, um, requests uh, from uh, from the outside, uh, from outside of Satmi uh, on uh, both uh, help to to use Sami elements in a sensitive way, um, or uh, as Pirita says, also people that have discovered misused and and um, abuse of Sami uh, cultural uh, elements, and. Um, uh, and as Pirita says, uh, the Sami Council also believe that it's crucial uh, that we uh, work across borders um, uh, on this matter, uh, which uh, uh, we which also have been discussed um, earlier today, uh, could be solved by uh, establishing a, a common mechanism uh, that would allow us and enforce us. Uh, to deal with uh, the question uh, that we need to. Uh, at this point, uh, all the emails coming in is uh, pure frustration uh, because uh, we we have uh, um, a few resources uh, to to use to 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 handle them in in a good manner. And uh, and we experienced that, for instance, after the col collaboration that the Samis had with Disney, uh, that very uh, that many uh, also big companies uh, try to achieve a sensitive use of of Sami cultural elements, and and they reach out and they because they want to do the right thing. Uh, so then it's very frustrating when, when we actually uh, don't have enough resources uh, to, uh, to collaborate uh, across borders uh, as one people and, and offer them the help uh, that obviously also would benefit us. Um, and that that's, uh, kind of brings up a... A thing that I wanted to ask Elena, because we've talked about those requests that come in, and I'm sure every everyone gets those. But Elena, do you have, does that occur with you as well that someone will ask for guidance or request in something that might not be appropriate or might be appropriate or any situations that you've experienced like that? Yes, it happens to us all the time and in the same way as the Sami Council. So we have so limited resources at my museum. We are we are just two, two of us working. And uh, one recent example, it was an email which we received from a person from somewhere in the US. Uh, obviously a, a young person who was asking about Sami myths related to the heavenly uh, um, to uh, to star constellations and uh, the hunting of the moon or a reindeer on the sky uh, and uh, and so on and it was like very very vague understanding of the deep spirituality of our tradition of uh, the diversity within the Sami traditions and so it it just we just received a question can you just give us uh, some sources and so we are writing now about a reindeer so this is one extreme example and other examples might be more more sophisticated but uh, so i think it's good that people uh, contact the sami museums because we are the professionals in the field of sami cultural heritage and especially sami intangible and tangible heritage um, yeah but um if uh, Jacob would allow me, so uh, we, we can continue this discussion, but I have one issue I would like to share with everyone, which uh, is something else. But Christina oh, had something, a, a reaction on, on what I have said. Christina? Yeah, I just wanted to, to uh, while we were discussing this, just shortly comment that uh, that I think that in the Sami communi community in the past, the way we have dealt with all of these questions is that uh, as individuals uh, or individual organizations, we have taken the burden and the responsibility uh, to, as best as we can, try to um, 
achieve a sensitive use of Sami cultural elements because we see such a huge interest internationally in, in uh, our cultural elements and it's a non-stopping train. So uh, I really believe, uh, and the Sami Council emphasizes the importance uh, of, uh, that, of that, that these times should now uh, be passed. We need a more sustainable and long-term um, mechanisms to deal with all of these questions. And that brings to my mind something that was kind of explored by Christina Müller uh, talking about um, that appropriation versus the inspiration line. Uh, and in, in my mind, that also kind of connects to justification, people justifying sensitivity in their own way, you, sometimes externally and that type of thing. Uh, and I thought that it, the way that I kind of conceive a line there is the degree to which there is control over a use by the, the community, by the community that owns these elements or controls these elements when they're used. And perhaps that the more control that can be had by the community then translates into more appropriateness and more appropriate inspiration. Uh, would that kind of be an accurate thing? Is that something that, um, that makes sense or that you would like to comment on, maybe uh, Perita? I would like to uh, to make a comment on that, if I may. I can continue. Yeah. Yes. So when we are talking about control over the use of uh, of our cultural elements and uh, possibilities for misuse, so I would like to focus everyone's attention to the use of new new technologies, which open a lot of possibilities for us as the Sami people to preserve and disseminate our, our, our culture, but it opens unlimited possibilities to misuse. I'm talking now about digitization and 3D modeling of our cultural heritage. And I became aware of this uh, when I started working with our uh, anniversary exhibition on repatriation of Sami drums. And uh, as uh, people, uh, it's a general knowledge that there are about 70 Sami drums which have been preserved and uh, just three of them are owned by Sami museums in uh, the Nordic country, uh, countries. So our exhibition is going to focus attention of the whole world and especially in Sapni that we need to fight for our right to have uh, our ob objects of our cultural uh, heritage and spiritual culture in our own possession. And uh, when it is said objects, I, uh, it is an omission uh, because uh, for our exhibition, we don't consider drums as objects, but as persons. But this is another issue. And then in order to make this exhibition and knowing that we will not get the originals of the drums for a purpose of this exhibition, we have decided to use the 3D uh, technology to make 3D models of the chosen drums, which we have chosen in collaboration between four biggest Sami museums in the Nordic countries. And so we made our list and I contacted the museums in Germany and in Sweden. And uh, so now we have made the models. But when it's done and when we will make the, the exhibition, which is going to be high tech and very good exhibition, I believe and I hope, uh, but now we are talking about how uh, 3D data can be shared and while once a 3D model is shared, it can become downloadable and printable. Can you imagine that if we are not uh, cautious enough, if we don't limit the access to three dimensional data, then we can open the possib possibilities for the whole world to print our uh, precious objects of our cultural heritage where, uh, for whatever purpose, for jewelers, for souvenirs and for whatever. So uh, based on these experiences, our museum has started working on the development of data management plan 
for 3D modeling, and we are going to involve uh, to involve uh, our Sami partner museums in Sweden, uh, Finland, and on the Norwegian side. And they have all said yes, we are going to join this important work. But uh, the issue is that this is a modern technology, and the limitations and the da uh, data management um, guidelines are not done. And now we need to speak loudly about this and to raise awareness about the possibilities of misuse. And uh, probably after a while, some parliament uh, or the some parliaments uh, would uh, want to join uh, this project on development of guidelines for uh, to encourage a cautious approach to sharing three-dimensional data of Sami and other indigenous cultural heritage. Thank well, you. These are fa this brings up fascinating points to me, Yelena, because that connects directly into kind of how we can use IP, especially with emerging technologies and how that interacts with cultural heritage and cultural properties, intangibles especially. But before we walk down that road, and thanks for sidetracking us, <laughs> but uh, I see Yalmar, you have a, a, a comment. Yalmar, you're on mute still. Uh, uh, thank you for, for, for the discussion, which I, I feel is very, very important. Uh, at the same time, I also think it's very important for me to 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 uh, uh, think forward. Uh, uh, when traveling in the Arctic, in Nordic, uh, also Sami land, uh, etc., uh, uh, I've been several times in, in Rovaniemi and uh, 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 visiting the center. Uh, 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 Santa Claus uh, uh, area, I cannot recall the, the, the Santa City, something. It's, you know, if you see the desk for, for, for souvenirs, uh, as I could see, everything are fake art. You know. So, so but something has to be so be have to <laughs> to be done on on that issue. That's only an example, Robert Emi. We also see it uh, see it in Greenland and other parts of of uh, uh, Inuit areas. Uh, uh, and uh, sometimes you get angry because uh, without any consent with the, the, the holders of, 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 of uh, uh, the, the cultural uh, values and uh, uh, traditions, etc., that, that misusing uh, 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 the, the, the cultural uh, 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 treasures and stuff. And I think it's important to, to you know, I think uh, the trademark issue, somebody also mentioned, is a core thing. I think uh, 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 Sammy and the uh, ICC, we, we, several years ago, we started to, to, to cooperate, to talk about that, uh, to cooperate on. I think it's there yet, Jacob, I met you, eh? Yes, that uh, was. Yeah. Uh, we had, uh, but but it failed. Because we didn't got the funding for. The, we started to to uh, cooperate with, with our artists, uh, uh, not organized uh, artists uh, around the uh, uh, new, for instance, and in, in all the areas. But uh, and, and I, I think also it stopped by by our government because of our involvement in, in stuff. It's another story. Uh, uh, also, uh, you know, it's important to have a dialogue. It, it's important to, to reach those uh, 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 people who are doing uh, doing those art uh, art art cultural fake uh, fake uh, uh, stuff. I think the uh, that what Walt Disney animation story. But I think it's a good example how. You know, 
how 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 we can step forward in a way, you know, with the Sami Council and Parliament parliaments succeeded in reach the, the huge company like Walt Disney and negotiate. Uh, uh, and and uh, first time ever uh, uh, started uh, uh, that negotiations took to place and the result of organized cooperation between them uh, 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 started. It's also a, a way to do it, uh, which is through agreement by consent the people of holders, uh, cultural holders and property holders. Uh, also for, 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 for Greenland, uh, 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 I appreciate Christina's uh, uh, presentation and, and they're doing a lot uh, uh, at the Greenland uh, uh, the National Museum, also in regards to, to repress Repre no, I, I, I have to. I haven't speak spoken Re English for so. <laughs> Re repatriation issue from from from. Uh, 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 she knows the whole thing. Uh, 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 that that women did a lot of, and uh, I saw in the news that that uh, Sami Parliament President. Uh, uh, wants to, to get back uh, 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 a Sami uh, drum uh, 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 back from, 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 from the Danish Museum. I don't know whether it's in, in still in, in, in Sami land in the museum, but, but it's a, a, a way also to, to, to get attention through the, the press. Uh, 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 when we meet that kind of issues. I think in Greenland also, I think my, my thoughts, immediate thought in regard to what, what can we do in regards to, 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 to talk about uh, protection or, or, or mechanism in regards to protect the, uh, the, the, the our treasures. Uh, I think, uh, uh, for instance, ICC Greenland uh, uh, is open to to to, to if uh, needed to, to talk uh, to have a dialogue with the Greenland National Museum. Uh, uh, Christina, so if you can mention that to your colleagues there, we are open to to be part if you want to to start up or, or any dialogue on that issue. Thank you. You bring up some, a lot of good points, Yalma. Uh, and there's a lot of things I'd like to explore, but maybe Parita, I see that you have a comment. Yeah, thank you. I agree with Yalma about the consent uh, that, um, and in terms of the control over our intangible and also tangible cultural heritage, heritage um, that whoever wants to work with us needs to get our free prior and informed consent, and that's really important. But I'd also um, add to the discussion about control that we need to have control over priorities as well. Because if you think about many of these things, whether it's Sami Yoik or our Tuotti, our handicraft, uh, for example, the Latjakah, the horn hat, or all the drums, um, uh, for us, it's all about decolonization, and that is our priority. To heal, there is a lot of hurt, a lot of shame uh, related to traditions that have been lost or partly lost, also our languages. There are so many issues that we internally need to deal with, and that's part of the decolonization process that as a people we are going through. And my sincere wish to any external parties who are very inspired by Sami culture and either want to work with us or want to exploit our culture or whatever, hold your horses. Uh, I hope you understand that we as a community and as a people, as a nation, we need time to work on these things internally uh, and, and work on decolonization and, and also to put in place all of these structures so that we can efficiently and quickly and, and well and in a respectful manner, work with our own cultural heritage and, and build those um, cooperations that we definitely want to have. 
but we need to take time to build all of this and to build the mechanisms uh, to work with the external world. And things like the Disney contract, of course, were uh, put together in a very short period of time. And I uh, commend all the people who were part of that. That's an amazing job. Uh, but, you know, there are enormous foundation costs, I could say, or cost of establishing these kinds of projects every time that there is something, uh, a request from the external world. Uh, and I'll conclude uh, by saying that we also have internal projects where we need those same resources. For example, a project that uh, many of us on this call and on this, in this conference have been working together on uh, having a, a Sami national law, the Sami international yoik. So that is an entirely um, internal project that will also benefit uh, the outside world. Uh, but that even that requires a lot of coordination, resources, and so on. So we can't be um, simultaneously working on all these things. So I hope that we get some kind of uh, peace and quiet from the external world to work on these issues that are important for ourselves and that are priorities for us. Well, I think that's another underlying point that's been mentioned by by everyone on the panel today is the resources. That these are big questions and these are to, to find solid and functional solutions, it needs that consistent and constant resourcing to be able to establish mechanisms properly and address the issues properly. Um, and Christina, I, there are some of those particular projects that you've dealt with though, and perhaps uh, it, you could tell a little bit about the experience of being in something like that and balancing the internal and external type of interests, because that attaches back not only to resources and funding and practicalities, but also what we've spoken on about ownerships and, and those type of levels. Yes. Um, I, uh, uh, on behalf of the Sami Council, I, I uh, attended the, the work with um, the cooperation we had with uh, Disney and and also I have been able to, to attend other, several other uh, IP protection uh, issues. And um, as, uh, as everyone in the panel says, it's, it, it, is, uh, it is work that requires a lot of resources. And, um, um, and, um, uh, and it, of course, uh, also brings uh, forward um, uh, the need to, to as Pirita said, uh, also uh, uh, prioritize those uh, internal discussions. And uh, I know that Rune Fjellheim, uh, who led the, the process with the, uh, with the Disney Corporation, has uh, in his um, keynotes many times uh, brought, up, brought up the point that one of the challenging parts uh, working uh, with uh, Walt Disney wasn't the external cooperation, uh, but it, it was uh, quite challenging also uh, to organize the internal uh, cooperation, both because we have um, such big differences uh, in funding possibilities and resources. For instance, the cultural department on Norwegian side, the Sami parliament on Norwegian side, have uh, several more employees than, for instance, uh, the Finnish and Swedish side, um, uh, which of course then uh, gives uh, the Norwegian side maybe a a bigger possibility to, to work on these issues. And, and this is also a, a, a challenge for us. So uh, 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 a funding uh, or uh, uh, a resource possibility that will, uh, that will make it possible for all Sami parties to take part in the development uh, uh, of the of the mechanism or, or the the method uh, for Sami to to uh, to work uh, together 
uh, I think is, is, uh, it's very needed and, and very important going forward. Uh, we're coming kind of close to pushing up against our time. So I was thinking maybe to kind of finish it up, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of good content with each of, of your contributions and some fascinating points. And I think it's really beneficial for everyone that's, that's hearing this. Um, so maybe just to end, perhaps think about what the future would look like, ideally. Um, not, not just as it comes to ICH, but perhaps structures around it or, or protection or even the relationship between the indigenous uh, cultural elements and indigenous people and external actors. Um, Yelena? As a matter of fact, I had uh, something else to say, but uh, your question made me uh, to decide otherwise. So um, I think uh, my suggestion when I think about the future, I dream about strong Sami museums which have the leading role in uh, the work with Sami tangible and intangible, intangible uh, cultural heritage. And when it, it has been said so much during this uh, conference today about the wealthy Norwegian state, but the Sami museums are underfunded. So what uh, our Sami museums receive, it's almost nothing. It's about a couple of million of Norwegian kroon up for one museum or so. So I think that uh, when we are talking about resources, I would encourage uh, all uh, influential bodies, peoples to work to lift, to support our Sami museums on all sides of our wide Sami land, that these museums would uh, be, uh, could have resources as well as the Sami parliaments, as well as the uh, Sami Council and all other organizations which are interested in uh, in uh, <laughs> and which burn for this work to protect and uh, and um, uh, forward our cultural heritage so that we would together uh, make a big effort to uh, receive to uh, to find resources which are available, but it is just like we need to do it together. It's not up to each museum or one summit parliament. So we need to do it together. This is my call. Thanks, Elena. Uh, Perita. I have quite a simple wish and vision for the future, and it's simply um, anyone interested in Sami intangible, tangible cultural heritage I hope that everybody will respect indigenous rights and respect our right for self-determination uh, and not insist that, oh, there aren't any legal protections or instruments and this and that that are binding. Uh, it's quite simple. You take the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and follow that. Everything is there. Um, so this would make life uh, quite a bit easier. Maybe coming back, back to the examples I gave, gave earlier or an example I gave earlier with this uh, virtual running event. Uh, so in that case, the problem was that in their marketing and in the whole concept of the event, they were using very stereotypical representations uh, of the Sami uh, that gave a very kind of backward and historical picture of us. And in addition, they were using our symbols like our flag without our consent. So in that case, um, we came to quite a good uh, solution, uh, not to the one that we wanted, but we negotiated and, and the company stopped um, promoting their event. They didn't stop the event going through and, and so on as we had hoped. But anyway, we came to some kind of a conclusion. But we wouldn't have had uh, an, an example like this. And there are numerous other examples if companies and organizations just simply respected indigenous rights. I have one uh, quick uh, comment to Pirita's uh, speech now. Pirita, what do you think? Uh, the Nordic Sami Convention, which has been on ice quite for a while, probably this is now time to start working to ratify it together. It's just yes, a suggestion and my, my vision for the future. 
Yeah, it has taken a lot of time and we have come to this point and the Sami parliaments have identified some uh, needs for improvement. So we we should go through those and, and hopefully the states can approve those uh, improvements. And then uh, you're right, uh, this is a good instrument to start working um, and, and harmonizing the rights of indigenous peoples and Sami people here in the Nordic countries. But it was encouraging to hear that there was a solution to the that you the negotiated one to the running situation. My thought is always that these rights and properties exist and the more examples we have of them being recognized and respected, the more that will become the default within society. So that's encouraging to see that we're getting more and more of these examples and more successes um, building up. But uh, Yalma, for something, an ideal vision so in looking out in the future of ICH and Indigenous properties. Jack, uh, after many years uh, of working on Indigenous people's rights and, and, and uh, uh, almost everything in regards to protection of, of culture and etc, etc, it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy, and uh, it's uh, very important not to 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 uh, uh, surrender on 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 those issues. Uh, uh, also, uh, in Greenland, we are there is a body who is doing the Christian, uh, uh, the Greenland Constitution, drafting the Greenland Constitution in regards to to I don't know when. We will get the independence, and I hope those issues are are, are considered uh, as well. But but uh, I think it's important to act right now, also uh, nationally, and, and uh, 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 also we have good experiences uh, working together with with the uh, same council and same parliaments in Nordic. Uh, 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 countries within the United Nations work and within the Arctic Council uh, 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 as permanent participants. And, and I think it's uh, uh, still very important to, 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 to start up the, the, the dialogues also within our own communities, in our areas. That's the reason why I mentioned that, that maybe the two to Christina Müller from National Museum of, of, of Greenland that maybe uh, we should take a little step, maybe meet uh, each other uh, uh, and, and talk about what can we do from our side and to have a dialogue on that. Uh, and, uh, so we have a, a trademark problem in, in for instance, in Greenland, in, in the Canadian Inuit side, it's very much developed, uh, and uh, in Alaska side, uh, it's more more uh, commercial, commercial, uh, commercialized uh, uh, trademarks uh, uh, where you don't have to be 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 be, be uh, part of the Inuit society and stuff is totally mixed up and so we have a huge uh, uh, huge problems on that area i think first of all to uh, start again on dialogue of, on, on, of with the, uh, the right holders and uh, and the uh, cultural heritage protection uh, uh, holders uh, etc i think that's by now, it's, it's the only way to, 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 to start off again on, on that area. So uh, that's the reason why I think this meeting is very important. And that meeting gets me to think, think, we have a lot of things to do, but, but specifically on, 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 on the, the protection of cultural heritage issue. I'm happy to, to that, that that issue gets back to, to my mind, to my mind and my head. Thank you. Well, and the, I think that is also a great point, the, 
the necessity for dialogue and discussion and even development of a lot of these issues, both internally within communities, but also that interaction between communities and authorities, whether that be the governments or the IP offices or those type of things. Um, and it came to my mind, Farita, uh, when you mentioned the declaration, I think an approach of of those rights and properties in that uh, coming from the communities, in my mind, is an implementation of that. Um, that way, we are able to not rely on external interpretation of what these things are. Instead of trusting others to interpret, then these would be the tools that that allow to instruct what is what is appropriate. But I think that's a great point on that discussion for sure. And I think everyone's thrilled to see these these discussions develop, especially in this context and as we're going to see on Thursday too. Um, but Christina, vision of the future. <laughs> yeah, I feel optimistic today. <laughs> so most most days are hard when talking about protection of Sami cultural heritage, but Today is a good day, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and and uh, and working with with Frozen Two uh, was really empowering, uh, I think. Uh, and uh, we see a development where Sami cultural uh, property uh, properties are acknowledged, and uh, we need to keep up. Um, today we know that protection of of Sami cultural heritage is done without our competence without our, our influence and, and decision making and um, and the consequences are uh, uh, that the that the structure uh, the IP structures today is not functionally enough for us our properties still remain uh, unprotected and as uh, Pia mentioned uh, earlier at a high risk for appropriation so uh, when it comes to opportunities and, and looking forward, uh, the Sami Council, we, we see a, a huge opportunity in, in building a long-term structure where Sami uh, self-determination uh, is central. A key uh, to ensure Sami self-determination is to, of course, uh, ensure the resources, empowering us to handle IP uh, issues uh, on our, our own uh, terms. So uh, and so today I'm I'm hopeful uh, for that to happen. Um, and uh, at least on Sami Council side, uh, this is something that we will take part uh, to to work against towards. <laughs> well, this is this has been great. Um, I'm not going to try to sum everything up. I think we've been through so much and so many interesting ideas and interesting uh, topics for discussion. I think the two things that I take away um, and others may take away other aspects and I know Celia is going to hopefully tie everything up in a bow. <laughs> but uh, what I took away was kind of the need for development and discussion, the need for that to be rooted in the control of the of the indigenous people here of the Sami people to be able to direct that. And possibly central to all of that is the support and the resources and funding to allow that to happen. Um, but I'm sure there's there are more kind of teachings and learnings to take from this. And I thank everyone for for being on the panel. I hope I didn't mess it up too much and everyone got to got to kind of express what they wanted to. And I appreciate the discussion. This was great. So thank you. And Celia, are you taking it from here? Yes, I am. Thank you, Jacob. And thank you for this great panel, for this really great discussion uh, on very many important uh, subject, subject matters. Uh, um, and uh, we are now slowly coming to the end of this webinar. And uh, <laughs> I have been given the honor <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even, or perhaps more likely the duty to, to summarize uh, this uh, interesting uh, webinar, which will of course not be very easy, but I will try to do my best. 
um, of course, we have been uh, today going through uh, in the opening of this webinar uh, on the background for the work on the Sami intangible cultural heritage presented by the Norwegian, the Sami parliament in Norway, where we went through uh, some of the aspects uh, uh, and based on the very various recommendations from both Sami Parliamentary Council, the IMCAS project, and also the Sami Parliament itself uh, on the Norwegian side. Uh, then we have moved on and uh, looked at the IMCAS project itself, presented by uh, Pia Njorgam, who's also been uh, working for the Sami Parliament of Norway with this project. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Pia uh, emphasized the emphasized the property aspects of the IC edge uh, and also pointed to the self determination uh, that is being pointed on by various mechanisms uh, at an international level. Um, she also pointed to the living heritage part side of. Um, the IC edge and also questioned how the implementation is uh, performed. Um, the huge budgetary gaps between the various Nordic countries and the Sami uh, uh, parliaments was also touched upon by PIA. Um, before we moved on to Greenland and Kirstine, who was then telling us about the Kalalis, Kalalisut um, and the cultural appro appropriation or appreciation, as uh, she said that she also questioned when is it imitation and uh, when is it inspiration and could is insp inspiration a cultural appre appreciation. Um, this is very important. Important. After that, we had the panel discussion and the panel debate that was very uh, well uh, led by our very excellent chair, Jacob Adams. Um, and there we had some very important key points, like uh, a solution was already presented quite early that there should be a common mechanism. Uh, new technologies were grasped, was, was taken up to debate, um, as well as repatriation uh, questions of spiritual um, entities, objects or persons was even mentioned here. Um, data managing plan was raised in this new technology debate. And then we touched upon fake art. Um, before we moved on to this, uh, the need to build our own structures. And the resource question has been touched by many, almost all the panelists and also all the, um, by many uh, uh, speakers today, which is uh, a, a, a vital question because it's also a question about how to uh, uh, allocate those resources. If we're allocating all to the external forces, then we don't have the time for our, our own internal uh, resources. But then again, if we leave the properties unprotected, then there is a high risk for, appreci for appropriation. So it's almost like a catch-22 situation at times. Um, the need for strong Sami museums have been pointed out. The very strong need to respect indigenous rights, um, which is a key uh, to, to solve all of these problems and challenges that we're facing when, when dealing upon uh, ICH questions. And also, uh, there has been a call for the Nordic Sami Convention to be uh, to, for the ratification of the Nordic Sami Convention. Um, empowering processes has been mentioned, but then I want to actually close this summary by pointing to the very much important to the dialogue within the communities and as well as right 
holders um, because there is a trademark problem and the need and, and there is a, uh, a big need for Arctic cooperation. Um, I think I I will leave at that. I took the liberty of taking a very fast summary of uh, this uh, this uh, webinar, and it's been a pleasure to host this with so many good uh, uh, um, speakers and also this very interesting webinar at the end. So. I want to thank, thank on my behalf uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to chair this event. And uh, once more, I want to extend my gratitude to all of the participants of this webinar. And with this, I guess, Lena, you want to say something at the very end. You are muted, Lena, yes. if you want it. Thank you. Thank you, Celia, for the excellent sharing. And also my, my, my warmest thank you for all the presenters and the panelists and really interesting and important discussions. And I'm really glad you all came and, and participated in this event. And I am sure also then later when we can download then the video, there will be more more audience for these discussions. So thank you very much and I hope we can then continue the discussions afterwards and especially on Thursday once the conference takes place. So if you are still missing out a link for the event, it's possible to follow it online. You can contact, for example, me with the email that I sent you on the invitation. I'm glad to forward them to the ministry so it's still possible to, to take part in the event. So thank you for the co-organizers and participants and presenters. And have an excellent afternoon. Let's continue the discussions. Olu kiihtu aina läpmai. Kiitos. Kiihtu. Olu kiihtu. Thank you, bye. Kiihtu. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow, Lena.